Hey guys, Ms. Marusik here, and in this video we're going to talk about calculations involving half-life, and we're going to see how to tie this to nuclear decay. Now it says here that if we're given enough information to determine our rate law constant K, we can use our integrated formulas to perform calculations involving half-lives. And we actually saw that in an earlier video where we used these formulas on our chart to calculate our half-life time. And these are really helpful when we don't have a whole number of half-lives occurring. Sometimes we only have fractional half-lives occurring, and so the math can get a little more complicated. Um, however, sometimes we're trying to do these problems on the multiple choice part of the AP test, meaning we don't have a calculator. Also, we may not have enough information to solve our rate constant K. And so using those integrated formulas is maybe not necessarily the best way of doing the math. Um, typically, if you see any kind of nuclear decay question, which we know is first order, um, that we can do the math with a sneaky kind of, you know, mental math method because we're going to be presented with a whole number of half-lives. So it makes the mental math a lot easier for us to figure out. Um, all of these problems are going to involve going kind of one or two directions. Either we're going to have some sort of mass or concentration information that what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the time that has passed. Or we might be given information about the time that has passed, and we're going to try and get to mass or concentration information. So we're going to be going one direction or the other, and it just kind of depends on the problem which way we're working. So let's first look at a problem that I could use my integrated formula to solve these problems. So it says here that the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide is a first order reaction, which is really helpful because now we know half-life time is constant. It also tells us here that the half-life of the reaction is 17 minutes. So they're giving me a time here. Now, when I see that they're giving me a time and they're asking us to solve a rate constant, which we know to be K, um, I know that I'm going to have to use integrated formulas. I can't use rate equals K concentration in brackets raised to an order because I have time. And so if I have time, I've got to use one of these equations on here. Now, as a reminder, our first order reaction would have this natural log formula. And so that's what I've written here. And so what you could do then is just simply plug into that and solve. I would put my 17 minutes in for time. They didn't give me concentrations, but I know the concentration is going to be halved. So I just made up something for my initial A. I just said, hey, what if it's one molar? If I cut that in half, that would bump down to 0.5. And so I could solve from there. Um, however, since it was first order, and you also have the option of using t to the 1 half equals 0.693 over k. And so you could very easily solve it with that method as well. Really, it's kind of a take your pick there. You could do it either way. Regardless of which way you solve it, you should get a value of 0 0.0408. My unit of time was minutes, which gets raised to the negative first. I would normally multiply this times molarity raised to the overall order minus one and negative overall order minus one. Um, however, here my overall order was simply just one. So one minus one would end up being zero. And so that's why I didn't include the molarity as part of this unit here. So then on the next question, it says, hey, if you had a bottle of this hydrogen peroxide, how long would it take for 86% of it to decompose? Now, if you notice, 86% is not quite one of those common percentages that we see with half-lives. Remember, um, we see us going from 50% down to 25%, um, which would be 75% remaining. Then that 25% would get cut to 12.5, and so that'd be 87.5% remaining. So we're not quite to the third half-life mark. The third half-life mark would be 87.5, and this is only 86. So I'm not going to be able to do some sneaky math with this. I'm going to actually have to use my integrated formulas. But I'll show you how this answer makes sense here in just a little bit. So the first thing I would do is I would say, well, 100 minus 86 means 14% remains. So if I had 100% to begin with initially, I now only have 14% remaining of that. So I used that for my initial concentration and my concentration at my time. So then I'm trying to figure out the time 
and I can go ahead and plug in my K from part A. And when I do that, what I end up getting is T equaling 48.2 minutes. Now, I'm going to ask myself if that answer makes sense. We said just a moment ago that 86% is really close to that 87.5 mark. That would be three half-lives. Well, if each half-life is 17 minutes, and I'm going through almost three of those, that means my value should be almost to 51 minutes. And we see it's pretty close to 51 minutes. It's 48.2, so that's not all that far off. All right, so the next one, C, it says, hey, if you started the reaction with 0.1 molarity, what would be the hydrogen peroxide concentration after 15 minutes? And so if I look back up here, I'm like, ooh, well, that half lifetime was, again, 17 minutes. So this is going to cut, get cut in half every 17 minutes, but I'm not quite there. I'm at 15 minutes. So it's a fractional number of half-lives here. And so I'm again going to have to use my formulas to figure this out. So what I did is I plugged everything into my integrated formula. I put concentration of X here because I don't know that. My initial molarity was 0.1. Um, I put in my K, I put in my time of 15 minutes. And so then what I did is I solved my math. Now this is one of those where when you kind of consolidate all this other math, that ends up equaling the ln of X. And so what you've got to do is you've got to set both of these E raised to these values. So E raised to a negative 2.91 number. Um, and what that does is that cancels out the natural log over here. So you end up with just X equaling that E raised to that negative 2.91 number. And so when I plug that in my calculator, what that gets me is a molarity of 0 0.0542. Now I'm gonna ask myself if that makes sense. I know the half lifetime is 17 minutes. So that means this 0.1 would get cut in half down to 0 0.05 at 17 minutes. But I'm not quite to 17 minutes, I'm to only 15. So while this should be really close to 0.05, it won't be quite cut down all the way. And I can see that, in fact, those numbers back that up. All right, so that was a great problem to see where I needed to use integrated formula because my numbers weren't very user-friendly. So let's look at one where the numbers are user-friendly. Um, so this next example here, first off, I notice it talks about phosphorus 32, and it talks about it decaying. So I have an isotope mentioned where they're talking about nuclear decay. And so therefore, I know without looking at this problem very much that this must be first order. All nuclear decay problems are first order. We're going to have a constant half-life time, which is going to make this a lot easier to solve. So what I notice here is that it says, hey, I have a half-life of 14 days. If you begin with a 100 gram sample, how many grams of phosphorus 32 will remain after 42 days? So you notice it's talking about how many grams. It's asking us for a mass. If they're asking you for a mass, then that means I need to use the times to figure out how many half-lives I've been through. And I'm going to do this with some sneaky mental math. Could you do this with an integrated formula? Well, yeah, you could, except the only problem is we don't have K right now. So you'd have to solve K first, and that gets a little complicated. So I'm going to actually do this with some sneaky math. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, if I have 42 days that are passing, and each half-life is 14 days, how many half-lives would that give me? So 14 days goes into 42 three times. That's an whole number of half-lives, three half-lives. That's going to make this really easy to do because what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, that 100 gram sample, it's going to get cut in half three times. So if I cut this in half three times, 100 divided by 2 is 50, divided by 2 again is 25, divided by 2 again is 12.5. So that means 12.5 grams of the phosphorus 32 would remain. The difference from the 100 grams I started with should be how much has decayed into a new element or isotope. All right, let's look at the next one here. The next one says, hey, if 75% of a sample of pure iodine-131 decays in 24 days, what is the half-life of that iodine-131? So here I notice that they are asking me about the half-life time. So if I'm trying to figure out some times, then I need to use my masses to help me figure that out. 
Now, I don't really have masses here per se, but I do have percentages. And so I can use the percentages to help me. And so I would say, well, hey, if I start off with 100% and divide that by two, that would be 50% remaining, meaning that would be 50% that decayed. If I divide that again by two, that would be 25% that remains. However, that would be 75% that decayed into something else. And that was what I had. 75% has decayed into something new. So if that got me to the percentage that I wanted, then that means I went through two half-lives. And so if those two half-lives is equal to 24 days, then that means each individual half-life must have only been 12 days. All right, let's go ahead and flip the page and look at some other problems. So our next question says, hey, a rock sample contains five grams of indium-115. The half-life time is four days. Determine the time passed when only 1.25 grams remains. So here's the deal. I'm being asked about time passed, which means I probably want to use the masses to figure out my half-lives. So I see, hey, I started off with five grams here. I want to get down to only 1.25 grams. So I want to figure out how many times did I have to half this? Well, five grams divided by two gets me 2.5. If I half that again, that would get me down to 1.25. So that means if I halved it twice, I went through two half-lives. So if two half-lives have passed, but they told me back up here that the half-life time is four days, four days times those two half-lives would have been eight days that have passed in total here. All right, our next one says, hey, the half-life of 226 RA is 1,590 years. How much of 85 grams of the sample will remain after 6,360 years? So again, I see here they're asking me to solve a mass. How much of the 85 grams will remain? So if they're asking me about a mass, then that means I need to use the times to figure out the number of half-lives. So I see that each half-life is 1590, but 6,360 have passed. So if I divide those, that would get me four half-lives. So again, a whole number of half-lives, which makes this really easy then to solve. So what that means is that I want to take my 85 grams and basically half it four times. So I would literally take 85, half it once, half it again, half it again, half it again. See what that gets me. And when you plug that in your calculator, it does get a, a fairly big decimal, um, but it gets 5.3 when I kind of round it for two sig figs based on the 85 grams. If you wanted to put more decimals there, you can, but 5.3 would have been sufficient. So that is what remains, and actually that's what the question asked. However, if they had asked you how much is decayed into something new, you could have subtracted this 5.3 from the 85 to get the 79.7 grams that has decayed into something new. So it kind of really depends on what that question asks you. You've got to be really careful with the way they worded the question. All right, last but not least down here. This one says the half-life of 55 CR is about two hours. Then it says the delivery of a sample of this isotope uh, requires 12 hours. So 12 hours of time is going to pass. It asks about what mass of the material should be shipped in order to ensure that one magnesium of that 55 CR is delivered to the lab. So they're asking me here to solve a mass, which means... I need to use the times to figure out my half-lives. I see that each half-life is two hours, but I'm going to have 12 hours that's going to have passed. And so that would get me six half-lives that are going to take place in that time frame that it takes me to deliver this substance. Now this one, the mass is kind of interesting because they're giving me how much I want to remain at the end. I want one magnesium to remain at the end of this. So I need to go back and figure out well, how much would that have mean that I would started with and halved six times in order to get to one milligram? So then if I want to solve for that unknown mass, I would kind of think backwards. Well, if dividing all of that would equal one milligram, that means taking the one milligram and multiplying by two six times 
would equal my unknown mass. So basically, I'm going to take that one milligram and continually double it six times. Doubling it once is two, doubling again is four, doubling again is eight, doubling again is 16, doubling again is 32, doubling again would get me 64 milligrams. So what that means is that 64 milligrams will need to be shipped, so that way when it gets halved six times over that 12 hour period, that would ensure that one milligram of that isotope is delivered at the end. All right, hopefully we're feeling good about doing some calculations, mental math style, uh, with these half-life problems, especially involving nuclear decay. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.